Good morning, everybody. Once again, a very warm welcome to uh, the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation Annual Conference of 2024. Today marks the 10th Annual Conference in Westminster, with um, this being our third at the Queen Elizabeth II Conference Centre here in the heart of London. Um, first and foremost, thank you very much uh, to all of you for making the effort of being here today. Uh, I know you've got busy diaries, etc. Uh, the commitment to travel and, and what has uh, promised to be a... Uh, um, a, a strike at some point today that was not really too much of a strike, which was good news. Uh, but also thank you for your um, respective businesses for allowing you the time to be here as well. I'm more than confident that you'll be rewarded uh, by great discussion, insight uh, and engaging content. I would like to thank previous conference delegates for helping us to develop our conference uh, programme here today uh, with your feedback. Uh, sadly, Darren, we decided against the beers for breakfast idea, but we uh, will pick that conversation up offline. Um, to the speakers, panellists and contributors, thank you for your preparation, insight and commitment. And of course, uh, our returning host, Hannah, thank you very much for your great support. Um, and of course, uh, for Michelle for making things run like clockwork. Uh, to our sponsors, Sensetech and KUKA in particular, thank you for your financial support of this event. Uh, as you know, incredibly important, as Hannah mentioned earlier. Last but by no means least, a very special thanks to the engine room behind this event to the growing HQ team as a collective, but especially to Michelle, who runs this event like a military operation, starting midway through last year. Uh, Michelle often telling me off, uh, and I quote, poking my, own, my nose in, um, and telling me that, um, yeah, she is very firmly in control. Uh, but thank you for everything you do, the organisation, and of course, uh, what we do for the industry as a whole. Uh, speaking of a military operation, I do want to welcome, uh, who will be joining us very shortly, Wing Commander Calvin Bailey, MBE of the Royal Air Force, uh, who is a keynote speaker later today. Calvin was instrumental in Operation Pitting. Um, this was the largest humanitarian operation in over 70 years, which saw more than 15,000 Afghans and British nationals evacuated from Kabul Airport in just over two weeks as the Taliban seized control of the country. A monumental collaborative effort, and one that I hope will inspire our industry to work together as we face our own challenges. So thank you and welcome to Calvin. Um, it would be uh, remiss of me not to take this opportunity to also congratulate my son, Alfie. Uh, where are you, Alfie? Big smile. There he is at the back there. Thank you, Alfie. Uh, who has been working with Big B since graduating from school last year as our very own uh, social media apprentice. We practice what we preach. Um, Alfie follows the footsteps of Calvin and will be joining the RAF as an avionics engineer in a few weeks. So thanks for your time at Big B, your commitment to serve your country, and indeed for making your mum and me very proud. So good luck to you, Sam. OK, before I move on and delve into the order of the day, I would like to take a moment to reflect on a very tragic event that took place in September 2023. A friend and colleague uh, who uh, I've known for, uh, throughout my entire career within this industry, who later became a consultant inspector uh, to BIKBBI, was tragically killed in the most horrendous of circumstances. Ian Price was a much respected industry figure, loved by those installers he worked with and those installation managers he served alongside. He was a devoted family man, loving husband and amazing father. You may know that Ian uh, sadly died in the street, protecting his elderly mother from a dog attack, which subsequently sparked international headlines and a change in the law. So before we officially start today's agenda, I would like you all to join me in remembering Ian during a moment of silence. Thank you very much. OK, uh, onward to a period of reflection uh, and a look forward to Big Biz objectives for 2024 and beyond. We operate in challenging and uncharted times, but our industry remains resilient on a number of fronts. We have achieved so much as an industry, but there remains much to do, and collaboration will, only, um, uh, will be the only way in which we can navigate these uncharted waters. Collaboration is therefore the theme of today's conference. 
Whilst our 2020 logo incorporated the Together Stronger words, which we've now retired, the sentiment remains as strong as ever, and the need to work as a unit more important now than, ever, than it ever has been. 2023 for us was an organisation a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, there were challenging and some great milestones achieved, which I will go on to in more detail shortly. Uh, one of the most significant wins was the support we received from stakeholders and the wider industry. Our continuing sponsors, for whom we are so grateful, and to our newest corporate sponsors in shining an example that the KBB industry engaging with us more than ever before. So on that note, thank you and welcome to CT1, to eBay, Lake Showering Spaces, MHK UK, Trend Tool Technology and Triton Showers. And hot off the press and yet to be formally announced, we'll soon welcome Hansgrow, Sonus Bathrooms and indeed Articad to the BIK BBI family. So thank you to you. Looking further afield, the industry has seen triumph and sadly tragedy over the last 12 months. The collapse of Victoria Plum, as it was, and in particular the demise of their installation service, was a bitter blow for those uh, micro-installation businesses who loyally serve them. The collapse and the financial loss suffered by those small businesses is placing more pressure on a shrinking pool of installers and perhaps now influencing uh, how they may feel about their own future within our industry. We will later share some stark statistics following our own research, but already fragile and depleted workforce took another unhelpful blow, and it's worth recognising the potential impact and the suffering that would have inevitably caused those involved. But it's far from being all doom and gloom. Positively, we have seen encouraging green shoots for optimism, and we must hang on to that. Our latest National Retail Installation Standards partner, Easy Bathrooms, recently launched a turnkey installation service, which will no doubt create opportunities for some of those installers affected by the VP situation. So here's hoping for great things from them this year. Another exciting opportunity came in the form of announcement from our long-term retail installation standards partner, Rin Kitchens, and the news of their entry into the contract market. World domination seems closer than ever, and it's, and it's good news in, for the entire industry, but particularly for the installer community, as it seems their need to work with professional installers grows too. Okay, before we review 2023, and indeed a look ahead for 2024... It is worth uh, reminding ourselves the role that BIK BBI plays within this industry. The British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation is a government-sanctioned, not-for-profit organisation, the only one of its kind that is dedicated to installation and the KBB industry. Our values underpin the success and will continue to shape our future. They provide solid foundations for us to continue to positively impact our industry for the benefit of our stakeholders, our people, the businesses we work with, and the communities in which we operate. Our purpose is to drive positive change and improve standards within the KBB installation industry. There are no shareholders. The Institute is not owned by me. I'm simply the founder and the current custodian of this great organisation. Big B is in fact yours. So please use it, support it, and benefit from it, because anything less would be a terrible waste of an incredibly relevant tool for our industry. Okay, on to now our core pillars. Our strategy has developed organically over almost two decade history, determined by the needs of both businesses that we represent and the industry in which we all serve. Our four areas of focus, of, or core pillars, um, which are in no particular order, are education, standards, compliance, and sustainability. Education, without doubt, is the most prominent area of work, and it is by no coincidence um, that we focus on this area. Our work on apprenticeships, CPD, and retraining spans a decade or more, and in 2023, we made significant progress in this key area.
My name's Archie, I'm 17 and I'm from Essex. Now, I've been an apprentice for just over a year. I wanted to get into the KBB industry simply because it can expand on my personal life and work life because I'm not learning one thing, I'm learning it all. So I'm taking it all on at once and so I can use it to my advantage whether it's at work or at home. Being able to help everyone around me out making the customer's dreams come true, whether it's a kitchen or a bathroom. My name's Paul Miles. I've, I'm the owner of AC Electrical and Plumbing. Established the business back in 1995. About six, seven years ago, we had to go limited because we'd grown. And now we are a limited business uh, with five employees um, and we're looking to, to get bigger. The challenge, I guess, is recruitment, taking on more people. We have got too much work on and to try and to expand, but to get the right quality of people on board, is that's the biggest challenge for me. So as a business, we believe in the investment with apprentices. First apprentice was Mike, who's now a business partner. We've then took on Elliot, who's been with us five years and now in his tiling ability is second to none. Apprenticeships gives you the chance to mould a young person into exactly what you want them to be. And eventually, they'll have the skills to keep driving your business forwards. busy. Okay, in 2024 we will continue to work hard to drive learning and development within our part of the sector. Our education steering committee plays a key role in this and without any doubt a pivotal piece of the jigsaw that we must complete if we've any chance of sourcing, attracting and developing a competent, compliant and professional workforce for the long, short, uh, medium term. Our collaboration to deliver the Level 2 Fitted Furniture Installer Apprenticeship is complete, thanks to our industry working together, and this is a great example of the effectiveness of collaboration. But the work is far from complete, and the challenge um, of building a future workforce from the ground up needs much, much more work. We now have a fit-for-purpose career pathway for our industry, for the next generation of frontline tradespeople, and as of December, thanks largely to the efforts of Lisa Williamson from Achieving Partners, who is with us today, there is a new standalone apprenticeship standard for fitted interiors. We should all be very proud of what's been collectively achieved here. 
The video highlighted some amazing strides forwards, but despite this and new support mechanisms that are now available via our website tool and indeed the Apprenticeship Help Desk, the initiative has generally lacked industry uptake, which is an absolute tragedy considering the skills gap calamity we find ourselves in as an industry. Less than 100 new apprentices joining our industry is nothing short of a travesty over the last 12 months. It's not good enough, uh, and there's no point in us pretending otherwise. It's not going to fix the problem. Our industry coming together and creating a fit-for-purpose solution to our long-term skills gap challenge is the equivalent of us building a life raft for people stranded at sea, but nobody bothering to get on board because they're too busy taking selfies with circling sharks. I know we're all busy, and businesses must prioritise and focus on a number of challenges, internally as well as externally. But we have a robust vehicle for future-proofing the problem, but we're simply not using it. I know the government has much to do in terms of supporting SMEs, in particular to embrace apprenticeships, but we can't wait forever, and we must come together and act now to avoid this calamity. I absolutely hear the feedback from small businesses and indeed from the independent retailer. I would like to thank the KBSA for their debate on the topic of apprenticeships and the press coverage that followed. This collective feedback and the coverage is important for us. It is very much welcomed. We know apprenticeships need work, but we're at the forefront of development and driving change in representing all of you. Okay, on to our next core pillar, uh, and this is on the subject of standards. Standards must dictate everything within industry. That makes sense, right? Whether it's apprentices um, uh, aspiring to meet these high standards, whether it's uh, experienced installers being benchmarked against these standards, or whether standards themselves are used in the resolution of dispute Reputable industries need defined standards, especially those industries as complex as ours. While certain standards are in place for much of the home improvement sector, sadly, kitchen, bedroom and bathroom installation remains largely unregulated and without barrier to entry, leaving the door wide open to infiltration from untrained, unknown opportunists. I'm fairly certain that we're closer to some sort of mandatory regulation than ever. This, of course, could be great, but it could be destructive. And I guess that's where we as an industry have the opportunity to shape our own destiny, avoiding potentially clumsy, albeit well-intentioned, government intervention. In 2023, we began work on the 2024 edition of the BIKBBI Industry Standards and Guidelines publication. In partnership with our partners and beyond, Our intention remains not only to set high standard for conduct and service, but to bring together legislation, regulation, best practices with existing standards from across the home improvement sector. This is a huge but exciting piece of work. We'll replace the old PDF format standards and guidelines document with a new immersive fit for purpose digital platform from a modern, mobile and professional workforce, accessible by our already successful mobile app and available free of charge to the wider industry, installers and consumers. In addition to our work on setting standards in 2023, we saw the soft launch of the BIKBBI Independent Inspection Service following its suspension in 2020, our mechanism for measuring the standards that we set. This service will roll out nationally in Q1 this year, providing on-site, pay-as-you-go inspection services to the entire industry once more. Inspection that uh, that supports recruitment, performance management, dispute, proactively and reactively. That's a huge piece of work that will benefit you all. Our third core pillar is on the subject of compliance. I believe that this is very much the jewel in our crown as an organisation. Compliance is far from the sexy part of our industry, but it is a critical and a vital component of reducing risk to our entire industry 
uh, the retailers, installers themselves, and of course to those customers that invest in us. The fact is this, a compliant workforce is a lower risk workforce. Our industry is complex, with many moving parts including legislation, regulation, bylaws, consumer law, and that's before we even consider modern customer expectations. And we must resign certain practices to history if we are to lower that risk within our sector. Gone are the days where retailers and merchants provide their customers with a list of local fitters and allow their sales team to point customers to trusted contacts. By doing so, businesses facilitate unnecessary risk, not only from a legislative perspective, but from an ethical one too. Let me give you an example of just one small part of compliance and that associated risk. Excuse me. Did you know, according to figures released by the Ministry of Justice in March last year, there are 68,357 registered sex offenders that operate and live in England and Wales? That number means that there is the equivalent of one sex offender for every, every 769 people aged 10 and over in England and Wales. Just think about that for a second. By businesses pointing consumers to the unknown, we risk much more than corporate branding. So we must not underestimate the risk within our own operation. We must not prioritise the sale of pottery and chipboard over risk. So that's just one small part of risk, of course, that can be managed by compliance. Think about other complex areas, including risk posed by task-specific activity, like gas, electric, health and safety, building regulation, and so on. We have the ingredients for a disaster if we do not manage that risk effectively. Make no mistake, this is a high-risk, complex industry. But just like apprenticeships, we have a solution in the BIKBBI with all the aforementioned risk managed by us. At REN, we're committed in providing our customers with the very best installation service and our partnership with the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation is a key component to our business strategy. We began working with the BIK BBI back in 2017 as we continue to grow our national installation service. Working with the organisation on a number of areas including installer recruitment, rewards, standards and compliance. Carefully managing and minimising installation related risk is a critical component of our relationship with the Institute and our work with them. Whilst not limited to, does centre around this very important topic. We work with the BIK BBI to ensure our workforce is fully compliant through their relationship with us, with the Institute managing the documentation of our national network of subcontracted installers. This includes our adherence to health and safety, regulation, insurance provision and their background including qualifications and criminal record. Sadly, the KBB installation sector remains largely unregulated, posing a significant risk to our industry and the customers we serve. We believe that regulation, in some form, is the only way to improve standards and reduce risk, particularly when there is a skill shortage such as the one we find ourselves faced with today. The opportunity for unskilled, unprofessional and often unscrupulous fitters to enter our sector continues to grow. As long as demand continues to outweigh supply, the work that BIKBBI drives on the topic of regulation, working with all areas of the sector and engaging with government on this subject is critical for our business and the industry as a whole.
Steve from Wren getting all a bit diva earlier has actually bought a Sharpie to sign autographs. So, Steve, where are you? There you go. So, form an orderly queue thereafter. Okay, in 2024, we continue to deliver an industry-leading and robust compliance function for those professional installers registered with the organisation and those retailers they represent. Our standards are high, with registered businesses meeting and crucially maintaining a compliance status through rigorous checks. Insurance provision, HMRC status, rights to work, KYC checks, qualifications, health and safety, criminal background, and checking of those sub-subcontractors uh, is all part of our normal check-in process. But it doesn't stop there, and we continue to embrace technology to strengthen our already uh, strong compliance proposition. This year, we will introduce AI to CAMS, our compliance and administrative management system. This is a remarkable stride forward for a humble organisation like ours, especially when you consider we were processing posted paperwork just five years ago. Back then, from post box to completion, our processes could take a week. This was improved in 2019 with the digitalisation of our document processing and the introduction of CAMS version 1. A huge step forward after the development of a bespoke IT system. In 2024, this new AI integration will transform our, uh, uh, transform our industry's ability to reduce risk in real time. Processes that took days will now take literal milliseconds, improving efficiency and reducing risk like never before. It's not bad news for our human team at HQ as they will pivot from traditional manual human processing of documentation to a far more proactive service. We'll continue to develop our compliance toolkit too, connecting our stakeholders to those who provide solutions to compliance complexities. Hopefully you'll appreciate that BICB is not just a badge for the van, but is an organisation that not only is the voice for this part of our industry, the register for professional and accredited installation businesses, but one that plays a very important role in reducing risk. Sadly, the home improvement industry is littered with confusing badges that in many instances provide no safeguarding for consumers or those installers who pay their fees. If you're not already partnered with us, whether you're a national retail brand, an independent retailer or installation business, now is your time to get on board and do what's right by your business and indeed the customers you serve. Okay, last but by no means least uh, of Big Biz Core Pillars is sustainability. The good news is uh, that this is a subject that is fast moving up the agenda for the industry as a whole and moving away from it being an annual CSR tick box exercise. Thank heavens for that, because our future literally depends on it. We are seeing amazing strides forward for our industry from brands that are placing sustainability at the forefront of their business, um, and that is great news for all of us. In 2023, I had the pleasure of visiting Triton Showers. Triton are in the room, where are you guys? There you are. Hello, Triton Showers. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting their head office as part of the Big B corporate sponsor onboarding process, and I was literally blown away by their sustainability journey. There is a business that takes pride in environment and puts it very much at the heart of what they do. And they are in good company, as we have heard from many of our corporate sponsors about the great work they are doing, everything from product design and innovation to sourcing and packaging, all with the intention of protecting our planet. Rocker, Schluter Systems, CT1, KUKA, the list goes on. You have heard me mention the word critical a few times within my update today, and I gen generally try to avoid that sensationalism, as it often causes more fear, than, in, to be fair, than, than is absolutely necessary. However, our industry remains very much at a crossroads, and our planet is changing before our very eyes. We've already seen an alarming increase of officially categorised storms in the UK. This season alone, we are at number 10. Agnes in September, Babbitt in October, Kieran and Debbie in November, Ellen, Fergus and Gary in December and Henk, Aisha and Jocelyn in January 2024. I mean, it feels like we're edging towards a time when we run out of alphabet. What we're experiencing isn't normal, and we shouldn't dismiss what's going on. 
floods in the winter, fires and droughts in the summer, all becoming more frequent, and not elsewhere, but here in our supposedly moderate climate. Depleting natural resources, increasing global population, governments pushing back environmental targets, and us all consuming as much, if not more, than ever. As I understand it, albeit it's from my go-to news source of TikTok these days, even McDonald's are bringing back plastic straws because its customers are unhappy with the soggy consumption of sugary favourites. I mean, really. I'm no Greta Thunberg. I won't be scaling the Dartford Crossing, despite being fairly close to the office. I won't be hanging from the pillars, regardless of its proximity. I won't be gluing myself to the M25 in a horrid orange um, high-vis clothing. And I am definitely not qualified to stand here and tell you how to review your environmental strategies. What I can tell you, however, is this. We can all do more together to help this industry succeed. Water efficiency, energy consumption, sustainable resources, landfill diversion, which eBay will discuss later, is stuff that you are all working on. Independent research, thanks to our very good friends at the Bathroom Manufacturers Association, good morning Tom, uh, clearly uh, indicates the significant role that the fitter plays within the consumer decision-making process, more so now than ever. These may be small businesses in comparison to some of the brands in the room here today, but they have a huge part to play in the products and services that our customers choose. As individuals, installers are important. As a collective, they are a powerful force that we can choose to harness, helping our industry to deliver products and services that will safeguard our industry and our planet, and of course humanity, for generations to come. I do feel like some kind of patriotic background music fade to green trees and a Union Jack might be beneficial at this point, but I'm sure you'll agree with what I'm saying, and I hope you share the sentiment uh, of this very, very important message. Okay, that's me. I've had a stern look from Michelle. Uh, My prompt to wrap up, but before I go, I have one last thing to say. Despite the tough economic outlook and the political uncertainty that comes with a year that will include a general election, continued economic instability, the tragedies of war that will affect the most vulnerable in our world, we must remain stoic and positive. We owe it to ourselves and we owe it to those people around us. Our industry is nothing short of amazing. Amazing products, services and most importantly, amazing people. My father once said, only worry about those things that you can impact. If we all focus on changing the small things in our lives, big things will inevitably follow. And I do like that. But imagine if we focus on some of the bigger challenges too. Can we really divert the course uh, of a fast-developing installation workforce? Is it possible to create a unified industry where high standards and compliance are managed without government need to step in? Could we positively influence the installer when it comes to sustainable product specification? I think we can. In fact, I know we can. But we can only achieve this if we do so as a collaboration. We must come together, and there's no better time to do so. So, on that note, thank you for your attention today and for your attendance at conference. I hope you enjoy the rest of the schedule. Thank you.